Hi, how is Titi? How are you? Hello, good. How are you? I am good. It's so good to see you. It is good to see you under the circumstances. Yeah, I know. Like another year of the pandemic, another year of, I don't know, we need to look after ourselves, take care of ourselves and do all sorts of things. It still feels like a dream though. It still feels like, is this really happening? <laughs> it, it, it feels like you are, we are out of ourselves and we are just looking on at how our lives are going. Um, and because of the changes that we had to do, and we had to make um, the intentionality in what we, we, how we live our lives now, you know. Um, but I guess there's a learning in it um, because we're approaching life differently now. Um, we are now thinking differently, I guess, for some, for some people. But the, we've gone through the worst. I mean, people are still going through the most due to the pandemic. So... Um, yeah, it does feel like a dream. Every day, it feels more like a dream because you look at yesterday and you're like, wow, <laughs> I survived. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does. Oh, yeah. It does. Yeah. And I have to say, we must be grateful that we're still here. You know, uh, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. True. Yeah. True. Uh, you know, yeah. So let's start with our conversation. Um. So to anybody who's hearing us, to anybody who's um, listening, um, I've got CD and Bonani. You introduce yourself, CD. That's what people do on this platform. <laughs> and um, she's a podiatrist. Am I saying that properly, right? Perfect. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Um, and we're going to have a good conversation around podiatry as a career. And yeah, CD, please. Um, introduce yourself. Oh wow! How how do I do this? Okay, um, Tirim Bonani, a podiatrist, a lover of life, lover of jazz music, mother of two, and wife to Malusi Bonani. Wow! <laughs> wow! Malusi still features in there. <laughs> You see, that's the thing. You can't introduce yourself without mentioning uh, the lives. Your life revolves around other people. So it's quite hard, you know. But in essence, I am um, a servant, meaning what I do is, is not about me, but it's about the people that I come into contact with. What I do is about serving the people that I come into contact with. Um, the little things that we do or that I do uh, from a part of who I am. Um, that is who TD is. Um, I love food and everything nice. <laughs> I love that. I really love that. And, and, and I think that part about being a servant and, and, and helping people, I think that's just amazing. Mm. Yeah. So it's let's not, let's makes, take a step yeah. back. So let's mm -hmm. take, take a step back. When CD was 10 years old, did CD even know that podiatry existed? Let's start there first. And what is it that you wanted to do when you were younger? I didn't know that podiatry existed when I was 10, but I knew I wanted to, to have a life that is impactful in, in, in helping others. And the story that I can share with you is I was, I was, I think I was nine or 10. And my brother choked on, on, on a chunk of bread. And I, I, I performed the Halmach maneuver on him. Wow. And I saved his life. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm I getting saw goosebumps that... <laughs> as you say that. <laughs> and, oh and, God. and I saw that on Sesame Street as an eight or nine year old, and I saw that on TV. And um, 
I had an opportunity to perform what I learned on my brother and I saved his life. And I think there was only two of us in the house. Um, and when my mother came back from work, I told her what I did. And my brother also shared to her what I had done. And we only realized years later that actually I saved his life. And that's how I, I knew I wanted to do something where I could help people. But I never knew it was podiatry. <laughs> oh, wow. Tiji, that's an amazing story. I literally got goosebumps as you were telling that. <laughs> Can you imagine when you're eight and nine, you're just freaking out by the fact that you were calm enough to be able to help him out. That's amazing. Indeed. And now he's wow. over 40 now and living his life. <laughs> I hope you keep reminding me, like, you owe me. You owe me your life. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think I must start using that now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that was your brother. And, 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 and maybe that was the start for you to actually realize what, why you were here, what was True. expected out of your own life. And I think that is an amazing story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, me... Uh, bumping into podiatry and me seeing the potential in podiatry, but more so how I can use podiatry to to impact people's lives, how I can use podiatry to save people's lives and how I can, against my father's better judgment because he wanted me to do medicine, which I didn't want to do, um, <laughs> I, I can relate to that story. At least you still went like a health sciences route. I just ran <laughs> and I was like, I was horrible to the, in, in, in physics and mathematics. And I, told, I remember telling my father because anyway, now I'm digressing. But anyway, I grew up in a health, in a hospital environment and it mm-hmm. was clear that I was going to do medicine. There was no doubt in my body where ever I knew the hospital inside out, like the OPD and the, Mm -hmm. like I was that child. (laughs) And then I go to high school and I had to do mathematics. Mm -hmm. My mathematics was like, it was a pass, but it was just like a struggle. A struggle, And then physical science was like, okay, I'm done. And then I had to tell my dad, I just remember the disappointment in his face that I wasn't going to be a doctor. And I was excelling in accounting. And I was like, unfortunately, dude, I can't. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. Um, my, my, my parents um, would, from a young age, would tell me that um, you are going to be a doctor. You know, mm. you are going to be a doctor, whichever way they understood being a doctor to be. Um, they, they would say, this is the doctor in the family. And they would mention the story that I had just shared. That you had done, uh, yeah. You know, and I knew that somehow I'll be in that field and that's it. Somehow I'll be in wow. health. And mm. in high school, amazingly enough, I was, the only student who did biology higher grade. Wow. So I had my special paper being brought to me during um, uh, the exam. So you can imagine I had a different color paper. (laughs) Wow, that's so cool. That was cool. Exactly. And the reason I did that was because when I applied for podiatry, I needed to have biology in higher grade um, and I needed to push and I, I was able to do that um, and now you become the special child you know at home and even at school because they look at you differently but I knew I didn't want to do medicine because everyone was doing it um, another thing I didn't see anything different that people were doing on a day-to-day people did the very same thing um, mm. and my idea of what medicine was or what being a GP was, was like you're doing the same thing on a day to day. And then 
I remember researching about podiatry because I used to be a soccer player and I also used to be a hockey Let, player. Can I cut you? Can I cut you this <laughs> way? You know, we, you know, we have not even defined what podiatry is. Can, can you just tell people what podiatry is before we okay. even delve into other things? So, so the, you'll find different uh, definitions, but one that is common is we are trying not to say speci specialists, but we, we are professionals that are trained into, in managing the foot, foot and ankle. However, we do this in correlation of how the body functions as well. So we look at foot function, we look at uh, foot ailments that affect the body. And what we also do is we use the feet as the window to the body. There's certain things we see on the feet or that manifest on the feet that can guide us as to what is happening inside. Um, okay. If we look at what I do as a speciality, where I deal more with uh, pediatrics and diabetic feet, we look at the complications that are caused by diabetes and how best can I manage to prevent amputations. When we look at when we look at kids, we're looking at early intervention or childhood intervention where things that present or problems that present at an early age, how best can we manage them so that they don't cause complications later in life? So for dietary, we're looking at the foot and ankle in correlation to the body. How best can we manage those foot problems in order for the body to function better and not to have complications later? Oh, wow. Okay. So, but to me, lay person that I am, you are just a foot specialist. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> and I know in medicine, when somebody is a specialist, they would have done their, their MBCHB degree mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. specialized after. I'm like, ah, yo, she's a foot specialist. That's how yes. I explain it. Yes. So, but I know, yes. I know that I know the doctors want the differentiation, hence you call yourself the professional that deals with. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, no, no, I understand that part. Okay. So the completions come because of, but we, are, we, we try not to concentrate on that, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so tell me the story then on how did it get to a point where then podiatry was the thing that you wanted to do? Wow. So I'm trying to fix this for falling now. That's fine. So what had happened was, a, like I, I had already mentioned, I used to play soccer. So I was a soccer player in high school. I used to be a hockey player. And I also did cricket. Wow. So a little sporty. <laughs> <laughs> and then in and between, I did... 100 meters, high jumps, and long jumps. Uh, but that's besides the point. So because I was so active, um, I tend to, to research more on sports, and I bumped into podiatry. And then when I read more about it, and you must remember, this is now standard nine, I think grade mm -hmm. 11, standard yeah. nine. Um, and then I'm starting to research more because now I need to know what I want to do after high school. I need to go study yeah. further. And, mm -hmm. and then I research in grade 11 because now my teachers are saying I must apply. Daddy wants me to do medicine. And then I bumped into podiatry and I read more about it. And I, I, mm -hmm. I realized how podiatry play, played a role in assisting athletes. Um, and I was like, wow, this is a different uh, profession. Mind mm -hmm. you. By that time, I didn't even know one black podiatrist. Mm. Um, I didn't even know one female, any female podiatrist. Mm. And, and then I researched further and I found out this podiatric surgery. And then and, and I said, this is what I want to do. And I applied. I was rejected. Wow. <laughs> okay. I applied. I was rejected. And I was told. No, you have to choose your second choice. Um, um, and then I was told your your marks for your high, for your metric were not. I was I think a point short, and then I couldn't go in. Then I was told no, you can do 
um, a, a refresher course um, so that you can push your marks up. And then let's see if you'll be re, uh, you can reapply for podiatry. And that's what I did. Okay. And I remember that year when I did my, my um, foundation course at Vert Tech then, um, in the middle of the year, I said I wanted to do podiatry. I don't want to do biomedical uh, technology. And boom, I was accepted. Okay. And once I was accepted, I was like, there's no looking back. I'm working hard to finish uh, my course. And here I am. And, and how long is the course, CD? The course is four years. Um, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a degree uh, equivalent to an honors. Um, mm-hmm. It's four years. Uh, but the struggles are real. I mean, I did it in a space of about five and a half years in between okay. with financial challenges and yeah. working part time as well. And, 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 and that's, that's the story behind how I pushed for me to be here, mm. you know, and it's a story mm. of most uh, black children who, who found themselves depending on a buzzery and then your application is not accepted or your application is accepted, but they're only paying half. <laughs> and then you yeah. have to go find a job to, to, to pay for your, for your education. And that's, that's, the, that's what I had to go through to be, to even finish, you know. Mm. But my love for podiatry was, was not by chance, but it was by design. Because in my efforts of finding something within health, I was guided to what I love. And that's how mm-hmm. I found podiatry. And yeah. that has never changed since then. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. And now, you, in fact, you mentioned the fact that you... You had never met a black female podiatrist. Mm-hmm. So where I'm sitting, you are the only black female podiatrist that I know. <laughs> um, and, and I'm actually quite curious, how, how big is, I don't know if I want to call it an industry, but how, mm-hmm. how big is the podiatry space? And what is how what does it look like? Like, just give us more information around that. Okay. So, in my metric year, which was in the nineties, I had never known a black podiatrist at all. Until but did you I know met... a white podiatrist? No, not even. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not yeah. even. Yeah. And besides the, uh, a gentleman by the name of Richard Masweta, that was the only black podiatrist I, I knew. And when then I went to varsity, I met a few other black female students who were ahead of me, but I had still not met a, a, a black podiatrist, female or male, besides Richard Masweta. And then now we, 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 we fast forward into once I qualified. Um, and we need to consider that initially podiatry was, or being a podiatrist was for, for white people, um, mostly in private and never in the public sector. And with the ladies and the gentlemen who qualified uh, before me, then they started opening up doors. Mm. Um, so when you look at it, comparing 2005 to now, we have more black podiatrists. We have female podiatrists. Uh, and uh, I've had the pleasure of being part of most of their training. So I, I, as, a, as a former lecturer and as a clinician who trains students, I've come across a lot of Black uh, podiatrists who we've trained. So now okay. we're having more of those, more who are now in private and public sector. The numbers are not enough, but they are still getting there, and that's what we want. We want the numbers to go up. The industry mm-hmm. is a bit small uh, in a sense that when you look at supply and demand, uh, the, the industry is still small. There's still more. We need more. We need more so that mm-hmm. we, can, we can have access, you know, people can have access to what we do and, and people can get assistance from what we do. But it mm-hmm. is growing. Indeed, it is. Oh, wow. No, but I, I'm glad you even in a space where you're training more people because that's that's a very 
um, great way to actually even pull people out. Mm -hmm. So because when I asked you to have this conversation, it actually just popped in my head. I was like, I know CD, and not a lot of people know anything about podiatry. Oh, we are going to talk about podiatry. <laughs> it was literally, <laughs> that's how weird I am. I just sit there and I'm like, oh yeah, that person, okay, let me just ask. The yeah. only thing they can say is no, you know? No. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was quite fascinated. I was like, now that I think about it, and mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of kids out there, whether black, white, Indian or whatever, that would actually gain a lot just to know that there is this type of profession mm -hmm. out in the, out in, mm -hmm. in the um, it, within the health sciences. Because mm -hmm. from where I'm sitting, I think there's a lot of conversations around physiotherapy, psychology, and all these other things. But I think there are those specialties because they are quite niche that are mm -hmm. not as exposed as the other ones. Sure. And and I think yeah. I think that's a great thing. But from a global from a global perspective, how big is it? It's huge. <laughs> okay. It's 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 quite well from my 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 exposure and based on the people that I've come into contact with, it's actually very big. And if mm -hmm. you were to look at how um, I don't want to say sacred, but how important the role that podiatry plays everywhere else in the world how um, uh, other people in other countries would say podiatry is very important um, in in the multidisciplinary team um, uh, perspective in the multidisciplinary team approach of patient treatment um, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite it's quite big I've had the the pleasure of I mean, traveling to, to Kenya and only meeting uh, one podiatrist or two podiatrists for the whole country, you know, wow. um, and, and going to um, being invited to be part of a panel where um, you, you, you are in the midst of podiatric surgeons and podiatric uh, physicians and people who have specialized even further, you know, and how they play a role in the management of the foot. So it's, it's, it's quite big. Um, it's just, I, I believe in South Africa, we generally downplay our role. We, we, we never uh, go out and, and, and spread our wings in terms of what we can do, um, you know, um, letting people know what we do. It, it's one of the other things. And in, in most of my interactions with people, I push to even teach people about podiatry and what we do. And people are well receiving this and saying, wow, I didn't know this is what you do. Now I know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. other challenge that I think we're also having in the whole of South Africa or the, the African continent, there's only one school of podiatry. Oh, wow. And it is in Which South is Africa. Which is where? University of Where you studied. Exactly. Oh, wow. So, no, that's not right. <laughs> one school of podiatry. Okay, so how do we start? How do we start private schools in podiatry? Like, how do we, how do we get more of this? Wow, no, that's not right. Exactly. So I had a chat with one of my colleagues, a very close friend of mine, and she's she's brilliant in policies and leadership. And I said to her, I think it's time we, we opened up a school of podiatry, another school of podiatry. And I said to her, and I can assure you, if you were to lead it, um, we'll be there to, to share our expertise and teach. Wow. Um, I'm you know? not expert, but you, you can count me into kind of <laughs> behind the scenes and go, no, this needs to be done. I think I think for the future of our kids mm -hmm. and just for the future of, of Africa, mm -hmm. like we can't. And, and I think for me, it's a matter of we need to be our, we need to bring solutions ourselves. We cannot expect some Moses or somewhere who comes from somewhere to come save us. Exactly, exactly. And that is why even in our training, um, we 
we deliberately and intentionally say, you need to be the best in what you do so that when you share it with someone else, you are giving expertise and you're building a future leader as well. You know, mm, it is, mm. it doesn't, it, it won't make sense that, can you imagine if you had one school of um, um, accounting or, or a medicine or, you know, mm. so it means it's only in one place. How about those people who need to learn, who, who want who wants to do this, but they don't have access. Yeah. But but why would other universities, CD, not have um, this as a specialty? So what comes to mind as I'm speaking to you, you've got the Medunsas of the world. What is Medunsa called now? I don't know if it's still called Medunsa. Um, <laughs> you've got the Medunsas of the world. Yeah. You've got the universities of KZN where medicine is a big component of, of their offering. You've got UCT. Why is podiatry not one of the things in those universities? We're going to go back to what I said initially when I said we generally don't play the importance of, of podiatry, I believe. Um, because we've always wanted it to be such a special profession but mm -hmm. not opening up people's eyes to what we do we've it's like we've been cocooned to be in one place right mm -hmm. so imagine if we were collaborating with other professionals in other universities um in many other research or whatever the case may be and if they knew what we do and how the, the doors would have opened up for new schools to be developed or to be created or to be opened up. So because mm. we've downplayed what podiatry is, and we've always downplayed our abilities in the impact we bring within the health sector, uh, we've never really uh, showed ourselves up to be worth being in those universities. Uh, our yeah. we've never we've never but, but what's the solution word. so that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that but the challenge then sits with the current podiatrists to be the one that sell and and i don't want to say market but that showcase the benefit mm -hmm. because personally i've used you as a podiatrist for my mm -hmm. own feet issues uh -huh. And my back issues, because it wasn't about my feet, it was about my back. Uh -huh. But you were able to then help me through that because there was misalignment, there were all sorts of other things, and uh -huh. you kind of helped me through that process. Uh -huh. So so there's, there's bigger, or even maybe get us be the advocates that have had the services to actually uh -huh. speak more about these things. Uh -huh. You are so truthful in saying the current podiatrist, right? And I remember when I was interviewed a, a year ago, um, they were talking about podiatry and the changings of times. And I said, who else is responsible for podiatry besides podiatrists themselves? Mm. And who else understands uh, our impact within um, the health spectrum besides podiatrists? Who else can market? And the truth is, if people don't know about you, people won't start talking about you and people won't start involving you and people won't even care about you. So the marketing is also quite important where we have to share with people what we are able to do and how best can we push that we are within all these other spaces, fill these spaces up and, and mm -hmm. build ourselves up and create a new space for podiatry, you know? The, the solution is, is, is because, I, I, and, and, and I say this with the most respect and humility, I don't think because we've been trained to be creators of schools and creators of thought and in terms of um, besides the medicine side, it's hard to write a new narrative, but we need to start doing that. 
We need to start mm. to write a new narrative as to where do we want to see podiatry? How best can we push podiatry? How, how best can we re, not necessarily reinvent, but um, recalibrate ourselves and create openings for students that are coming? You know, yeah. we should be the trendsetters of building podiatry. And it is only us who can do that. So the responsibility yeah. and honors is with us. We need to collaborate with the philosophers out there, with the HR people out there, with the CEOs out there who are able to help us in strategically creating new schools, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, because we don't have that expertise. So yeah. it allows us now to tap into those other doors that um, prove that as podiatry we can grow, but the owner yeah. is also on us no true very true yeah but so just moving on from there so so take me through a day what is a day in cd the podiatrist what does that look like just to give somebody a sense of what's happening you know Uh, from a personal um perspective uh my day starts with a Me opening my eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Me opening my eyes and wondering how many cups of coffee am I going to have before I leave the house? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then the rest is history. Just kidding. Um, So from a day to day, um, wake up, prepare your day to walk in a place where you have to forget. I always forget about myself and I think about the people I'm, I'm, I'm going to meet. That's the first thing I, I do. A mental state where it's not about you, it's about who you're going to meet. That's one. Yeah. Now, um, so because now it's COVID, you then have to consider that there's a lot of donning up you have to do. Then after that, you have to screen patients. Um, between seven o'clock and one o'clock, I'm based at Chris Honey Baraguanas. And um, that in- involves meeting with patients from the wards, patients that are due for amputations, patients that are from amputations. Um, You're meeting up with patients that um, are dealing with, for instance, arthritic uh, changes of the feet, diabetic patients. You're also meeting up with pediatrics, which are your children. And from an hour to an hour, it's a matter of consultation and meeting up with those people and doing your best to, to help them. Um, and mm-hmm. I don't want to go into detail because there's more that goes into it. Um, but yeah. in that space of, of coming into contact with those people, you also learn um, to involve your, your social workers, you know, um, involving other professionals, uh, whether it's physiotherapy, OT, your surgeons, your, your physicians, so that you can best treat this patient, having a holistic patient-centered approach. What I know I always do is that I always involve family in the management of a patient. Um, I I always say I'm making the circle bigger so that uh, the struggles that the patient is going through, the family understands it better. The struggles that the family is going through, the patient also understands it better. Assisting them to carry each other's burdens. Now, that is Mm -hmm. until one o'clock when I'm at Chris Hani Baraguanas. From two o'clock until six o'clock in the evening, I'm at my practice where um, now this is my, my own private practice. And it's the same principle. You're meeting up with people that come with uncertainty, that come with frustration. Some are depressed because of what they are feeling, because of what they they have. They are fearful, they are scared, and they require you to be humble enough 
to assist them as best as you can. And that, that, that mm-hmm. means you put yourself in their shoes uh, so that you best understand where they come from and you best assist them in, in the transition. Because I always say it's a trans healing is a transition, it's a process. Um, and it's a process that has phases in it. And mm-hmm. as a patient, you need to be willing to listen to what I say as much as I'm willing to listen to what you say and we go through the process together as a team mm, yeah. and and that's that's ideally it when I don't treat you as a statistic or another bill that's coming in but I treat you as a connection to make sure that you are properly managed and that when you are out when you walk out you feel much better than you did before when you were walking in mm. No, I think I've experienced your case, so I can, I can attest, I can attest to that. But at some point, you mentioned that when you were describing podiatry, you mentioned that the feet can tell a lot about what is happening in the body. Mm-hmm. So I know that bit from reflexology yes. um, part, where they're saying the the feet can can tell what's happening in the body. Uh-huh. Which I don't want to call it methodology because in medicine for sure there's a different way to it. <laughs> but how do you do that within a podiatry space? Okay, more with res- with reflexology is more the probing and prodding, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, with with podiatry, and I'm trying to 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 search for an example that that I can. For example, let's use diabetes because that's, that's my passion and that's my speciality. Um, if someone has diabetes that is uncontrolled and uh, the nerves, the small nerves have been damaged, what we do as, as podiatrists, we do a diabetic foot assessment. And for us to ascertain if a uh, a patient has got nerves that are damaged, we do an assessment and that assessment would guide us as to whether they are damaged or not. Loss of sensation, pins and needles and all these other things that might happen on the feet. In some instances, we've Mm. been able to say to a patient, you probably have um, a kidney problem because we're looking at your feet and your feet are swollen and they are showing these signs. They are shiny, they are indurated and then end. So we are able to say there could be something happening in the kidneys. Let's go to your physician and let's see how, how we can assist you. Um, we've also in some instances been able to assist patients uh, with Uh, cardiac problems where we look at the feet they are manifesting in a certain way and we're like no 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 I think your heart has got a problem let because I'm seeing one two three four six things let's go to your physician and just confirm so that is how we work we 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 work Mm. more on a scientific um um a, a scientific side, but we also use our counterparts, our other colleagues, in order for us to confirm what we are seeing. But that's how. So that's, that's a, that line between the reflexology and podiatry is is obviously drawn. But that's how we would say, or I would say, the feet are a window to to the body because some things that manifest on the feet might actually guide us as to what could be happening in the in the body elsewhere. Wow. I think I think that's the interesting part that I didn't know from that perspective mm-hmm. is, is, is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So would there are there people, so let me just say I deal a lot with people that want to change careers mm-hmm. and and want to move maybe from one thing to the next. How distinct is podiatry um in terms of I don't know, this is radical. What I'm going to ask you is just radical. Would somebody <laughs> who's done maybe physiotherapy and they say they want to move into um, podiatry, would it be an easier transition? Would Are there specific causes that they might really need to do then to pull them into your guy's space? Like what would that look like? Um, so I remember when I did, when I started my first year, 
I was in class with um, two former teachers. Um, and I remember oh, wow. when I, mm-hmm. so they, were, they, they did teaching, they were teachers, and then they decided to change and do podiatry. And then I remember um, there was another lady who did, um, we call it somatology. Uh, it's a, it's yeah, a I know somatology. Yeah, pediatrician um, of course. Then they moved as well. Uh, the transition for someone who's already been in the health sector is much easier because mm. the, the, the courses and the modules you do are more or less the same. However, the transition for someone who has, hasn't been in the health sector is, is a bit not hard, but it's, a, you, it's like you're starting from scratch. From scratch, okay. And, I, and I've seen this with the colleagues that I'm, I'm actually talking about. I know I've had someone who's done radiography and for them to come to podiatry was much easier. And there's someone who's moved from podiatry to radiography, which was also much easier for them because they were already in that space. So it wasn't mm. as, as difficult. But you do find people that have done other courses. They they were in other professions and they decided, I want to do podiatry. Um, and I mean, there's other nurses who still ask today, can I do podiatry? <laughs> mm. And like, yes, mm. you can, you know, because they see um, how how we work, but more so the impact and how big and, and what an, an opportunity it is to be within podiatry and how yeah. easy it is to find your role within podiatry and your niche and you work on that and you hone that mm-hmm. and you harness it and you become better at that. But, but there are people who've moved in between podiatry and other professions and some it has been a bit difficult, but for some it has been just a smooth riding. Okay, okay. No, that's great because I think um, life happens at any point in time and, and I'm a big advocate for people not getting stuck in jobs that they really hate. And True. I've always just thought you can change jobs or you can change careers, not just jobs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can change careers at any point in time uh-huh. in your life. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, nothing can stop you if you put your mind to it. And Mm -hmm. I'm an example of having done that. And I always Mm -hmm. encourage people if they really want to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this has been a very amazing um, conversation. What is one thing that you would like somebody to take out of this? If they are thinking about podiatry, what what one thing would you like them to take out of it? Wow. (laughs) I never actually thought of it. I'm putting you in a spot, you know, those wise words. Oh, my word. <laughs> um, in terms of podiatry, I would yeah. say yeah. <sighs> you make it what you want it to be. That's one. Two, okay. there is always an opportunity to grow. And there is so much potential in podiatry. We need people that are brave enough to break those boundaries. And it might be you who's listening. And it might be someone Mm -hmm. else who you might be talking to. There is always that opportunity of growth. And I always say, if serving is beyond you, then leading is nothing that you can achieve. If you can't serve, you can't lead. And in any sphere or any spectrum, you need to serve so that you can become a better leader. And those leaders are the ones who need to break the boundaries to see the potential that podiatry has. And yeah, I think (laughs) that's from the top of my head. (laughs) No, those are good words. Those are good words. And, and I think the leadership element is, is quite critical because we find leaders that just want to lead, but can they, never, they, they don't want to serve people. And how, exactly. how do you do that? It, it, exactly. It, it always baffles me, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, so for anybody who's listening to us, please continue to subscribe. Please share this conversation if you did find it interesting. And please like, comment, ask questions. We are always willing to to engage. 
So, mm-hmm. Sidi, where do people find you? Um, find me on Instagram as the bold podiatrist. Oh, wow, the bold podiatrist. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a website, um, www.cdmbonanipodiatrist.co.za and on Twitter as mm-hmm. well, you find me as the bold podiatrist. Um, and then on, on Facebook, it's CD Bonani Podiatrist. So we're going okay. ahead being as bold as we can uh, because we are the bold natives of, of Africa. That's, that's amazing. And where's your practice? My practice in the, is in the north side of Johannesburg. You can find us on 061-818-2629. Um, you can even send us an email our, our, on our website. There's an email address, cd at mbonanipodiatrist.co.za. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you, CD, for taking the time. And we really appreciate. I think this for me has been quite exciting. I really hope there are a few people that will listen to this and then choose podiatry as a career. Um, or think, choose to consult. Or choose to consult. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you know, we'll always, I, I'm, I'm, I'm now, yeah, I'm big on, on, on promoting and, and promoting people and the service sure. that I've sure. used and, and mm-hmm. really helped me in the process mm-hmm. of this. I just yeah. remember telling my yeah. husband yeah. that I was going to see a podiatrist and he looked at me like why <laughs> but, but but you got to understand why so yeah so it's it's, it's been it's been a good ride thank no, you very much and it's been a pleasure godspeed thank you very much thanks